Have you ever wondered why the hours between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m. hold such significance in Islam? Why is this time considered sacred, and what can we gain from waking up at this hour? What if I told you that these quiet hours when the world is at its most peaceful offer an opportunity for reflection growth and a deeper connection with your faith? In the next few minutes, we will explore seven practices that are not only spiritually enriching, but also contribute to self-improvement and emotional strength. Are you ready to start on this journey towards self-discovery and spiritual enlightenment? Let's answer all the questions. Number one, Tahajud prayer. In the serene silence of the early morning when distractions are few and the world is just a whisper, there lies a golden opportunity. The Tahajud prayer the Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him once said, the best prayer after the obligatory prayers is the night prayer. This isn't merely a statement about the importance of the Tahajud prayer, but a testament to its transformative power. Waking up during the tranquil hours between 3 at a.m. and 5 at a.m. to perform the Tahajud prayer is a practice deeply rooted in the Islamic tradition. It's a time when the veil between the divine and the mortal is at its thinnest, a time when prayers ascend to the heavens unhindered. This act of devotion brings one closer to Allah, fostering a connection that transcends the physical and ventures into the spiritual, but the benefits of the Tahajud prayer extend beyond the spiritual realm. It instills a sense of peace and purpose serving as a compass that guides us through the trials and tribulations of life. It's a beacon in the storm, a light that illuminates the path even in the darkest of times. Moreover, the Tahajud prayer is a testament to one's discipline and commitment to their faith. It requires one to forsake the comfort of the, their bed and stand in prayer while the rest of the world sleeps. This act of sacrifice and dedication is a step towards self-improvement, a journey towards becoming a better version of oneself. In conclusion, the Tahajud prayer is more than just a ritual. It's a tool for personal growth, a bridge to the divine, and a source of peace and tranquility. It's a silent conversation with Allah, a moment of introspection, and a symbol of a Muslim's unwavering faith. Number two, reflection and dua. In the stillness of the early morning, when the world is hushed and the stars are the only witnesses, there is a unique opportunity for reflection and dua. This time is not just ideal, but divinely ordained for such spiritual practices. As it is said, our Lord descends to the lowest heaven during the last third of the night inquiring who will call on me so that I may respond to him. But what does this truly mean? It signifies a profound truth about the nature of our relationship with the divine. It's a reminder that no matter how alone we may feel, there is always a divine presence waiting to listen, waiting to respond. It's a testament to the boundless mercy and love of Allah who descends to the lowest heaven just to be closer to his creation. Reflection during these hours allows us to look inward to examine our thoughts, our actions, and our intentions. It's a time to confront our fears, our hopes, and our dreams. It's a moment of honesty where we can look at ourselves without any pretense or facade. Making dua during this time is like having a private conversation with Allah. It's a dialogue that transcends the boundaries of time and space, connecting the human heart with the divine. It's a moment of vulnerability, where we lay bare our deepest desires, our great fears, and our sincerest hopes. The act of making dua is not just about asking for what we want. It's about acknowledging our dependence on Allah, recognizing His power and His wisdom. It's about expressing our gratitude, seeking His guidance, and asking for His forgiveness. Number three, recitation of the Quran. In the tranquil hours of pre-dawn, when the world is still and the mind is clear, there lies a unique opportunity for the recitation of the Qur'an. This time is not just ideal, but divinely recommended for such a spiritual practice. As Allah says in the Qur'an, Indeed, the hours of the night are more effective for concurrence of heart and tongue, and more suitable for words. But why is this so? Why are these hours more effective for the recitation of the Qur'an. The answer lies in the tranquility and peace that these hours offer with minimal distractions 
and a calm environment. One can truly focus on the words of the Quran, understanding their meaning, reflecting on their wisdom, and letting them touch the heart. Reciting the Quran is not just about reading words on a page. It's about connecting with the divine. Understanding his message and letting it guide your life, it's about finding comfort in his words, seeking his wisdom, and striving to implement his teachings in your daily life. During these early hours as you recite the Quran, you engage in a dialogue with Allah. Each verse you read is a word from Allah, and each reflection or prayer that it inspires is your response. It's a conversation that strengthens your relationship with Allah, increases your faith, and brings you closer to Him. Moreover, the recitation of the Quran is also a means of spiritual and moral education. The Quran is full of stories of the Prophet's lessons from history and guidelines for personal and social conduct. By reciting the Quran, you not only get closer to Allah, but also equip yourself with the knowledge and values that help you become a better person. Number 4. Seeking Forgiveness In the solitude of the early morning when the world is still asleep and the heart is awake, there lies a unique opportunity for seeking forgiveness. This practice known as istighfar. It is not just a ritual, but a journey towards self-improvement and emotional strength. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, once said, Whoever regularly says, istighfar, seeking forgiveness, Allah will appoint for him a way out of every distress and a relief from every anxiety. These words are not just a promise, but a beacon of hope for those lost in the tumultuous sea of life's challenges. But what does seeking forgiveness truly entail? It's not just about uttering words of remorse. It's about acknowledging our mistakes, learning from them, and striving to do better. It's about taking responsibility for our actions and making amends where necessary. Seeking forgiveness in the early hours of the morning has a unique significance. It's a time when the distractions of the world are minimal, allowing us to focus on our inner selves. It's a time for introspection, for looking within and confronting the demons of our past. This practice of seeking forgiveness is not just about alleviating guilt or escaping punishment. It's about cleansing the soul, purifying the heart, and liberating the mind from the shackles of past mistakes. It's about finding peace within ourselves and paving the way for personal growth. Moreover, seeking forgiveness is also about forgiving others. It's about letting go of grudges, healing old wounds, and fostering a spirit of compassion and empathy. It's about understanding that everyone makes mistakes and that forgiveness is the first step towards reconciliation. Number 5. Remembrance of Allah In the serene stillness of the early morning, when the world is yet to stir from its slumber, there lies a unique opportunity for Dikar, the remembrance of Allah. This practice is not just a ritual, but a spiritual exercise that brings tranquility, fosters mindfulness, and helps control destructive emotions. Allah says in the Quran, Indeed, in the remembrance of Allah, do hearts find rest. These words are not just a divine command, but a profound truth about the human condition. Our hearts, often troubled by the worries of the world, find solace in the remembrance of Allah. It's in this divine remembrance that our hearts find peace, our minds gain clarity, and our souls attain tranquility. Engaging in dikar during the early hours has a unique significance. It's a time when the distractions of the world are minimal, allowing us to focus on our spiritual selves. It's a time for introspection, for self-reflection, and for cultivating a deeper connection with Allah. But dikar is not just about uttering the names of Allah. It's about understanding His attributes, reflecting on His greatness, and acknowledging His presence in our lives. It's about expressing our love for Allah, our gratitude for His blessings, and our longing for His mercy. Moreover, Dikar is also a means of self-improvement. It helps us control our destructive emotions, such as anger, jealousy, and pride. It reminds us of our purpose in life, guides us on the right path, and helps us cultivate virtues like patience, gratitude, and humility. In conclusion, Dikar in the early hours is a powerful practice that leads to spiritual growth 
emotional stability, and personal development. It's a journey of self-discovery, a path towards inner peace, and a gateway to a deeper connection with Allah. Number six, planning the day. In the tranquil hours of the early morning, when the world is still asleep and the mind is clear, there lies a unique opportunity for planning the day. This practice inspired by the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is not just about organizing our tasks, but about making the most of our time. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was known to be exceptionally organized, using his time wisely. He balanced his responsibilities remarkably, fulfilling his duties as a prophet, a statesman, a community leader, a friend, a husband, and a father. His life is a testament to the importance of time management and the benefits it brings. Waking up early allows us to plan our day, prioritize our tasks, and promotes productivity. It's a time when the mind is fresh, the distractions are minimal, and the potential for productivity is at its peak. It's a time to set our goals for the day to decide what needs to be done and to determine how to do it. But planning the day is not just about making a to-do list. It's about setting realistic goals, managing our time effectively, and maintaining a balance between our personal and professional lives. It's about understanding our priorities, recognizing our limitations and making conscious decisions about how we spend our time. Moreover, planning the day is also a means of self-improvement. It helps us become more disciplined, more organized and more productive. It reduces stress, increases efficiency and leads to a sense of accomplishment. So in conclusion, planning the day in the early hours is a powerful practice that leads to self-improvement, increased productivity, and better time management. It's a journey of self-discovery, a path towards personal growth, and a gateway to a more fulfilling and productive life. Number seven, Suhoor, pre-dawn meal. As the first light of dawn begins to break, there is a tradition that not only adheres to the Sunnah, but also prepares us for the day ahead. The pre-dawn meal, or Suhoor, this practice is not just about nourishing the body, but also about nurturing the soul. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, Take suhoor, as there is a blessing in it. These words are not just a recommendation, but a divine wisdom that highlights the importance of suhoor. The act of waking up early to nourish oneself, before the day begins, is a practice that brings physical strength and spiritual tranquility. Suhoor is not just about filling our stomachs, but about preparing ourselves for the day ahead. It's about starting the day on a positive note with gratitude for the food we have and the day that lies ahead. It's about acknowledging Allah's blessings and expressing our gratitude through this simple act of eating. Moreover, suhoor is also a time for family. It's a time when the family comes together strengthening their bonds and starting their day together. It's a time for shared prayers shared meals, and shared moments. But the benefits of suhoor extend beyond the spiritual and emotional. It also has physical benefits. It provides the body with the necessary nutrients and energy for the day ahead. It helps maintain a healthy metabolism, promotes better concentration and productivity, and contributes to overall physical well-being. In conclusion, suhoor is a practice that embodies the essence of Islam. It balances our physical needs with our spiritual duties, our individual practices with our communal responsibilities, and our worldly lives with our religious commitments. It's a practice that promotes discipline, fosters unity, and brings us closer to Allah. As the first rays of dawn pierce the night sky, we find ourselves at the threshold of a new day. Waking up between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m is not just about performing religious duties. It's a journey of self-discovery, a testament to our resilience and a reflection of our commitment to personal growth. This practice is about self-control, about mastering our desires and disciplining our souls. It's about fortitude, about standing firm in the face of trials and tribulations. It's about overcoming destructive emotions, transforming them into positive energy that propels us forward. But this journey is not just about the destination. It's about the journey itself. It's about the quiet moments of reflection, 
the heartfelt prayers whispered in the silence of the night and the tranquil solitude that brings us closer to our Creator. It's about starting the day with a clear mind, free from the clut of worldly worries. It's about greeting the day with a tranquil heart, filled with peace and contentment. It's about facing whatever comes our way with courage, patience, and faith. In the end, waking up between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m. is not just a practice. It's a lifestyle. It's a choice we make every day to strive for excellence, to seek spiritual growth, and to lead a life of purpose and meaning. So at the end of this video, let us remember that every step we take brings us closer to our Creator. Every prayer we make brings us closer to our purpose, and every moment we spend in reflection brings us closer to our true selves.